I'm Felix Salmon of Fusion. I, um, I actually have a business card here if anyone wants it. Um, Fusion is one of these kind of uh, confusing things. I have, I, I, this is literally true, I have an FAQ on the back of my business card explaining that we're part of Gizmodo Media Group. We bought most of the assets of what used to be Gorka Media. The Gizmodo Media Group in turn is part of Fusion Media Group, um, which is, also includes The Onion, which we bought. Um, and, and, the, and Click Hole, which is my favorite website in the world, and the Fusion Media Group in turn is, is, is part of Univision. This is all a sort of confusing thing, but we are a very big digital property, Fusion Media Group now, not Fusion.net. It gets confusing, I apologize. Um, we are bigger than BuzzFeed, we're bigger than Fox, we're bigger than, um, like, you know, Vice, uh, we have a TV channel, um, and we got there basically in three years, depending on how you count. Um, it, it was a kind of very quick growth rate, and, um, and we got there with less investment than most of these other sites. So we're, 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 I'm, we're, it is a great company, it's an awesome company, so I'm here to explain where it all went wrong. Um, this is, this is, I was talking to Peter about this, and, and he was like, you've got, you, everyone loves to talk in sort of vague, hand-wavy um, terms about their mistakes and all, all of the problems, they, the, the, the mistakes that they made and, um, and how they have to learn from them, but they never really get very specific. And so, in the interest of full disclosure, I thought I would like just run through like seven, very quick, like five minutes, run through seven um, mistakes that we, we made at um, Fusion Media Group because why not? Um, what, 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 well, so for the first thing we did, you might, those of you with long memories might remember this, we decided that we were gonna launch as a, an, gonna, I wrote this down because it's hard to remember, an English language current affairs TV station aimed at Hispanic millennials, <laughs> um, which is a mouthful. Um, it turned out after we, after we kind of started driving forwards with this idea that we actually started talking to some of these Hispanic millennials and, um, and they weren't really big on sort of being pigeonholed as being Hispanic and we kind of said that makes sense. So we, we, we uh, um, dealt with that and sort of pivoted and decided that we were just going to uh, appeal to a diverse group of millennials more broadly, um, which was great. Um, but that was um, uh, our first mistake, and one of the things that, although we managed to fix that before we launched, um, we didn't fix that before we built our headquarters in this place called Doral, Florida, and you s might actually know Doral, Florida, because it's, you drive through it, basically, on the way to Miami Airport. Um, it's, it's not the most pleasant place, and it kind of made sense when we thought that we were Hispanic to be in this like, weird, <laughs> weird place next to Miami Airport, but it turns out that if you want like, some really cool, hip, millennial content creators to do news content and current affairs, that trying to find those people in um, the Miami area is not that easy, and probably with hindsight, um, we would have been better off in, um, I don't know, Oakland or Brooklyn or something like that. Uh, it wasn't even um, as cheap as we thought it would be because, as I say, the Royal Florida was next to the airport and there were planes going overhead, so we had to spend a lot of money soundproofing. Anyway, um, so that was mistake number two. Um, mistake number three, I think just starting with a TV channel, it's very um, seductive. I think, we've heard all um, for the past couple of days about um, how much money you get from retransmission from you know, the, the cable companies if you have a TV channel. And we love this money and it's awesome and it's delicious and yeah. great for cash flow. But when you start with a TV channel, it has these kind of knock-on effects. And I think um, you know, we should have basically listened to a bit more to Jason Blum yesterday who was like, you can't just take this generation and sit them down and tell them to watch TV. They're going to try and get content wherever they want to get content. And when you make this big bet on TV at the get-go, then everything else winds up, you wind up having to like, work around those cable deals in terms, of, in terms of trying to do everything else that you want to do and get your content distributed in other places. And that does 
humble you a little bit, especially when, and this is the next thing we did, we decided we were going to launch mostly with live TV, and live TV in particular is a thing which is hard to make work on like non-TV mediums. Um, what else did we do wrong? We, well, we decided, partly because we were going with this live TV thing, we decided that we were going to do most of our production in-house. We weren't going to outsource this to third-party production companies. Um, do you remember how I was talking about how it's hard to find talent in Doral, Florida? Yeah, so um, that turns out to be true for live TV as well. And so we had this kind of new team, an unseasoned team, trying to do like six hours of live TV a day from day one. It was hugely ambitious. And when you do it, if you do something hugely ambitious, you know you're going to make mistakes. And so that's fine. We, as I say, we are open about our mistakes. We learn from our mistakes. But one of the problems is that if you're making mistakes with employees, if they're doing stuff which turns out not to work, um, what you wind up doing is you wind up having to fire those employees, and that's kind of unpleasant. And if you have the third-party production companies, then it's generally a bit easier to be able to um, manage those transitions. Um, yeah, and in general, I think, you know, this is what well, I'm up to now, number five, like managing the growth of this thing. We're a big company now. Um, we employ a lot of people, and as a mentor of mine, Jim Roberts, once told me, it's always more pleasant to, grow, to work at a growing company than at a shrinking company. And so if you're growing, I just feel like you want to spend a little bit of time managing that growth and growing steadily. What you don't want to do is grow really fast, hire a whole bunch of people, and then like fire half of them, wind up at the same place in terms of headcount, but like creating a bunch of um, sort of unnecessary turmoil and resentment and stuff along the way. You don't, you know, it's better to just keep growing, um, you know, like cattle, as it were. You always want to, you always want to have them growing. You don't want to have, like fatten them up and then get them slimmer. This is, why, why am I making livestock met metaphors? I have no idea. Um, I, I apologize for those. Um, oh yeah, also don't let TV people build your website. Obviously, <laughs> thank you. Um, you, uh, yeah, you, you. If you start as a TV brand, and then what happens in, inevitably is that the website gets built as a kind of the, the digital presence of the t of, of the TV brand, and that's great for the TV brand, and it does absolutely nothing in terms of trying to build out a digital property. Um, we have amazing digital properties now. You know, Gizmodo, Kotaku, Jalobnik, Jezebel, Deadspin, The Onion, and all of them were built as digital properties, pretty much. I mean, you can argue about The Onion, but the um, none of them started as TV, TV stations. So that's something we've learned. <laughs> and, and more generally, I just think that um, you want, we, we've learned to be a little bit suspicious of the kind of synergies We've all been hearing a bunch about video, and um, and it's very seductive again to feel like, oh, we, we're a TV station. We're, we know how to make video. We can take this TV stuff and put it online, or we can take the online stuff and put it on TV. And those synergies are really, really good at one thing, which is creating meetings. Um, they're, they're really bad at creating either good TV or good digital content. If you, the repurposing. Um, doesn't work. We do have synergies. Synergies actually make a lot of sense if you're talking about like sales across different websites, if you're talking about content management systems, if you're talking about HR, you know, there are sort of fun, interesting synergies which you can do there. But in terms of content, um, you know, certainly we've been talking a lot about how TV is going to be um, consumed on smaller and smaller devices, and that's true, but that is not the same thing as a sort of linear digital convergence. And I think that's an important thing. Um, so that's very quickly seven um, of our many mistakes that we've made. But we have done, well, um, I'm around Julia Science, who's around. If you buy us a drink, we might even tell you something we did right. Thank you. <laughs>